everybody. Welcome to our 4 o'clock live stream. Um, today we're talking about cat trapping and usually cat trapping has proven to be one of the more interesting topics that we have discussed. Um, we do a Saturday morning kids cat academy the third Saturday of the month. It's an hour and a half for seven dollars and during that session we will do something educational. We will do a craft and we'll read some stories and um, one of the more popular topics is the cat trapping day, where I teach and the kids help me set up the cat trapping. Um, oh my gosh, who's this baby? Paisley. This is Paisley. Rose Mama's daughter. This was the one we talked about yesterday, Rose Mama's daughter. The Como Smoke and Fire owners, by the way, messaged at the end of our live stream from yesterday that um, Rose Mama and her kittens, this one, were trapped at Como Smoke and Fire. They get a lot of um, stray feral cats out there. Speaking of, let's talk about why we would even need to cat, trap a cat in the first place. So most places around the US have a really bad stray and feral cat population. And that's, that's definitely true of Columbia. Um, and so what our partner group, Boone County Animal Care does is they go out and they trap cats. And cats that are able to be socialized and are are very good pets and they can be adopted. Um, they go get them fixed at spay and, the Spay and Neuter Project and then they go into foster homes and they have a period of socialization. And then some of those cats that they trap end up here. We don't have relinquished cats here. These aren't cats that were once somebody's pet and they just can't have it anymore. These are all trapped cats. Um, and Boone County Animal Care is the only group in town that does that exclusively. That's all they do. They don't do any relinquished cats and they, they actively go out into the community and do mass trappings. Actually in the spring, they, they'll have a couple weekends where they see how many cats they can trap in one weekend. Sometimes they've, they've trapped over 50 cats in one weekend and then went and got them fixed. Now all those cats don't end up going into homes. Many of them, they trap and they release them. It's called TNR, trap, neuter, release, and that, that's so that when they go back out to their, their home where they were originally trapped, they don't have more babies. And you can tell a cat has been um, trapped, neutered, and maybe was going to be released by, you see this ear tip right here? Right there? Whoops, nope, it's not exactly showing up. This is sweet Sylvie. You see that ear tip? The chopped off ear tip? That's the international symbol. Oh, she wants to. That's the international symbol um, that a cat has been fixed. He, that's right. Yeah, I keep calling Sylvia she. Um, and when I say international, I really do mean it. You see that in countries around the world. I've done a lot of traveling as a part of my teaching. Um, you guys might recall I mentioned that I teach the AP World Literature and History Black class at Hickman. So every summer we've tried to do some traveling to help me be a more informed teacher. And in some countries, the, cat, the wild cat population is excessive. Um, Spain and Madrid, really bad. Also, Israel, we spent a summer in, living in an apartment in Jerusalem. So many, so many feral stray cats, and they all have little tipped ears. They, do, they have a very good TNR program in both Spain and especially in Israel, um, Jerusalem, namely. Um, hey, if any of my Hickman students either current or former are watching, here's a trivia question for you. So the reason why there's this huge overpopulation of cats in places like Spain and Israel has to do with the plague. If you are a former student of mine or if you're just somebody watching and you know the answer, why would they have had an abundance of cats for the plague? What would cats kill? Any, any guesses? Put them in the comments, folks. Do you know what cats kill? What? Mice. Mice. Yep, they need <laughs> mousers for the play. And so here's the bonus question, students who are out there watching. How did the plague make its way over to Europe? It didn't come on rats. What did it come on? If you are out there and you're a former student or a current student, message down below. How did the plague end up on the rats? that were in Europe that necessitated cats. And so that's why there's this huge overpopulation of cats in Europe and they're all ear tipped. And so if you see them here, that's the sign. And so then you don't try to go up to the cat and handle it if it's a cat that could be violent or aggressive or scared probably mostly, right? Um, so you can see from the distance, oh, that cat's got an ear tip. That cat has been fixed, I can leave it where it is. So we're gonna talk about trapping today. And we're gonna talk about, oh, Pedro's gonna knock over the camera. <laughs> Don't knock over 
the camera, Pedro. <laughs> Come on, baby. Okay, quick job. There we go. My coworkers are not as cooperative as yours, I bet. Okay. So you need a few things. You need a cat. This is going to be my cat. We're going to do it with a real cat before this is over. But we're going to start with the sample cat. You need a trap. This brand is True Catch, and I'm telling you that because if after watching this you decide you'd like to assist our partner group, Boone County Animal Care, with trapping, you can go online and get this. True Catch, T-R-U. And um, we really like this particular trap. Other things that you need when you're going trapping, kiddos, you're wanting to make a list. This would be a great time to get out a piece of paper and a pencil so you can write down the things you need. So the trap, obviously, stray cats. You need a blanket or sheets. Our partner group uses a lot of uh, sheets that they get donated. I'm gonna use a blanket today. You need newspaper, because what's gonna happen is when that cat gets in there, the cat's gonna be scared and you're not going to take that cat out because that's a safety risk. That cat's gonna go to the bathroom. Newspaper. The newspaper also hides the trap components. You need really strong gloves. We can't stress this enough. Don't trap unless you, my, my regular Michelle here, uh, do you want to, do you feel comfortable coming on camera and telling what happened? She trapped, she tried trapping. Tell them what happened. Well, I was oh, trying. Your head. Your head. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't want my face on. Yes, I really love. I was trying to trap a foster cat that had escaped, and instead I got a very angry raccoon. <laughs> and thankfully, they had loaned me these gloves because his teeth went straight through the finger of the gloves and not my finger. Yeah. So these are welding gloves, not just any gloves. Um, and they're, they're covered in that thick, thick leather. So you must, you must use these. Um, sometimes I've seen our partner group when they've gone trapping the cats, they get really, they get really feisty. Um, and so if they're not trapping them, if they're like catching them, if they're able to, sometimes they're able to do that. It may look like a nice cat at first, but they are going to be scared and they're going to get those claws out. They, we've, seen, we've seen them draw blood, so well, you have to have really strong gloves, preferably ones that go up the arm. You also need a temptation. Stella, what's a good temptation for cats? Tuna. Can you think of anything else? Chicken or any meat. Chicken or any meat, right, tuna. And we've actually got, what is this? Tuna, so Sardines. Sardines. Good old stinky fish. The stinkier the better. We actually had uh, one of BCAC's volunteers here on Tuesday helping bring some new cats in. Elise. Hi Elise if you're watching. Um, she's also a ballerina. She's, she's an awesome human. And she was about to go out trapping. Um, I think with Peggy. I can't remember. I think it, it was my Peggy. Anyway, she had a can of mackerel in her car. It's very common for our, our BCAC volunteers to just keep this stuff in their trunk with a can of mackerel or a can of sardines. Um, when we do this with the actual cats today, I'm going to use cat food. It's not as odiferous. It probably wouldn't get a feral quite as well as something like, I know Diane, our, one of the leads at BCAC, she likes to use fried chicken, like Popeye's KFC kind of fried chicken because it's got a really strong smell. Um, but we're not going to do that because we don't want to have the cats get um, uncomfortable bowel movements that the wranglers then have to clean up Michelle. So I love my sister-in-law. I'm not going to do that to her. And I appreciate that. And then the other thing that you need is something to put it on. That cat, when it gets in here, depending on the state of, its, of the cat's ear level, it might be very aggressive in that state of fear and thrash all around. So you don't want to put glass or anything like that in here. You want to use a paper plate. Or Connie, who's another one of the leads at BCAC, I remember she one time recommended these. They're um, like little hot dog. This has been smashed with all the demonstrations I've done, but it curls up usually. And you put a hot dog in there, right? You can get these at a restaurant supply or Sam's or probably a grocery store, something similar, or some sort of cardboard carton. It works really nice because then you can just pitch it toss the whole thing out, right? Because this can get messy if they're thrashing around and the food goes everywhere and they're going to the bathroom and that gets on everything. They actually have to hose these down. They have a regular hosing down session and then they let them dry out in the sun and the sun bleaches them. You also want a spoon for scooping. I mean, it's, you can use your fingers, but you know, if you can think of ahead of time and a can opener. These all have tabs, 
But if you're making a list, if you're thinking you want to help us, write down can opener. The volunteers have all said there's been a time where they forgot a can opener and they're out there ready to trap and they're like, well, well crud, I've got everything ready but I can't get the food. So those are the supplies you need. And we're going to show you how to set this up first with the big cat. This is Stella. Stella, does your stuffed cat have a name? Uh, that's not mine. Mine's at home. It's oh. not as fluffy as was this, that. Was this grandma's? Uh, yeah. So you can practice this at home with a stuffed cat too. Okay, what's the very first thing that we should do, Stella? We should put the newspaper on the bar. I think it's a great idea. Do you remember how to open this thing? Turn to the side if you don't mind. Yep, you've got these little hoops that you pull up, and then there's this lever in here that you lift up. Let go. Nope, didn't stick. You lift it up like that, and then the door stays open. It's this little contraption right here that keeps it open. And then in the back, over here, is another opening, and this pulls up. And so, Stella, I'm actually going to have you put someone there in the front, and I'll do the back so we don't trip it. In the back here is a little ledge, and on that ledge, it's like a little plate like this, and it's hooked to a chain that goes to the door. And when a cat goes all the way, in, it does that. Here, watch that. The side, don't mind, sweetie, so they can see. So the door will be open, and then the plate is back here, hooked onto this chain. And then when a cat steps on it, so they're going to go in the trap and shut this door. They go in the trap, and when they step on that plate, it traps them in, right? So let's set it up again. And all you have to do to set it up is open it. Move to the side, sweetie. Go over. Go over there. So those that are wondering, Rue is the interested kitty. <laughs> okay, Rue. Who Rue the bar. Bar. So we're going to leave it open, and then what you do is after you have it open, you take your little paper tray. Oh, Rue, saying hi. Say hi, everybody. Say hi to Rue. Come on, Rue. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so you, we're not going to open it just yet, Stella. Mm -hmm. You take this, and you set it at the very back. It's very important that the food goes to the back of the trap because you want the cat to walk all the way through. And when the cat goes all the way through, they will step on the plate. And so then you put the food in on the plate. We're not opening it yet. You close the door. And here's what the blanket is for. You want this to be a tempting space. Cats that are stray or feral are used to getting their food in dark corners, right? Places on the sides of dumpsters. Um, if they see all of this contraption, they're, they're not gonna be as tempted. Also, once the cat has been trapped, once they're in this space, it's dark, it will be kind of calming for them. If it's a dark, dark space, once they're trapped, maybe they'll thrash around a little bit less. So, this is where the BCAC people often use sheets. So you cover it up, make sure that it's really nice and dark, and then what a cat will do, Let's name this cat. What do we want to name it? George. George? Foo-foo. <laughs> Foo-foo it is. Okay. So you've got Foo-foo the cat here. Foo-foo's like, this does not look like any stray or feral cat I've ever seen, by the way. This looks like something fancy, the, 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 the um, animal group fancy felines would find. So Foo-foo was spooky like that. Goes in. Ooh, what's in there? It's really dark. I'm curious. And she's got to go all the way back because it's dark. What is in there? What's all the way in the back? <laughs> and then it closes on. Obviously, your arm won't be in there. Okay, so that is how to trap a cat. Now, you are watching the entire time. We can't stress that enough. Do not leave the trap. That's how we ended up. Was it a raccoon you said? <clears throat> is she, she stepped away. She went inside to her house for just a little bit, left it out there, and her a raccoon went in. Um, you have to watch the trap. You absolutely cannot leave it unattended because if, if you see a raccoon, you can, you know, scare them off. So that you don't have to try to figure out how to get the raccoon out of the cage. It's more challenging at first. It out. took you how long? About 45 minutes. About 45 minutes and with a good death scare. <laughs> so what you'll do after you've been watching the whole time, you found that you trapped that cat, you're going to cover up all sides. And what's nice about these cages is there's that handle on top, right? 
so you can grab that handle. And what BCAC will do is they'll put that in the back of the, their vehicle. Um, some of the partner people, they like uh, Diane, one of the people that we work with the most, she um, takes out some of the seats in her car on those big days and, in her minivan. And then it's, you can stack a whole bunch of things on top of each other, which is nice. And then when you get home, you really want to set the cat in your garage or some quiet space like that where they're all alone and just leave them, leave them here. They've got food. You've provided them food. That wet food will be enough to, to sustain them until they can get their surgery. And if you're partnering with our partner group, they can hook you up with a spay and neuter project. They do very low cost um, spay and neuters. They're currently closed, unfortunately, with, with this COVID um, business. But um, if you wanted to do it yourself, you could take that cat to the spay and neuter project. I do recommend you get some, on, some advice uh, in terms of how to best facilitate the cat going there. Um, because you don't want to take that cat out. You should not handle that stray or feral cat that you've tracked. If you are not experienced and you don't know how to do that, keep it in the cage. Okay, you want to track a cat? Yeah, buddy, okay. So, get, what did you name her again, Foo Foo? Foo Foo. Foo Foo, where'd you get that name? I don't know, I just <laughs> took the eye from and replaced it with a U. I'm going to use some letters. This is, if I didn't introduce her formally at the start, this is Stella, my daughter. She's our junior wrangler. You might have seen her on the reading day. Where do you go to school, Stella? Oh, yeah. What grade are you? Fourth. Who's your teacher? Miss Crom. Miss Crom. Say hi, Miss Crom. Any students out there? If you're a student, drop a line. Where do you go to school? What grade are you in? I want to know who's watching this. If we've got mostly adults or if we've got a good range of kiddos. I hope there's some kiddos watching. This is a really good... Um, conservation lesson, really, which falls into the sciences, right? This is like school. Okay, so let's get Fufu out of there. Hi, Fufu, I'm gonna set you over here. Okay, and again, you might recall, I said that we were not going to use sardines because I love my sister-in-law and don't want nastiness in the litter boxes later. Thank you. Okay, so I'll grab one of those trays there. What? The, the white trays, the little papers. Yep. And we're gonna pry open this can. What do we have here? Cats in the kitchen, Goldilocks, chicken and salmon. We mostly feed the cats at the cafe um, dry, dry food, but when they are sick or they've got a loss of appetite for some reason, we can't figure out why, we will often feed them wet food to kind of perk up their appetite. They're like gagging over the kid. You don't wanna eat this? Oh, here come the cats. They smell it. Okay. Not yet, not yet, not yet. <laughs> Pedro and Corday, of course, were first in line. Yep, Pedro and Corday, the residents, they know what's up. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna okay, this. we are going to set that right here. And we're going to shut the door. Carefully. Now, what's kind of nice is because we know these cats, and we know they're not going to be freaked out. They've seen this demonstration. Our residents, Pedro and Corday, the ones who will live here forever, they've probably seen me do this demonstration about five times at the Kids Academy. I'm so they know the drill. They know that they're not actually being trapped. It's not like a PTSD-inducing situation for them. Although I will be honest. Um, oh, my gosh, this is hilarious. I've got to turn the camera. Look at this. <laughs> the Wrangler had just... Michelle had just left to um, go move that food container to a different room, and they were all following her at the door. Look at this. Oh, gosh. This is about to be funny. This is what we wanted to happen yesterday when we did the food demonstration. So I'll give it a second for all the cats to come out. Yes. And I'll fix the camera. Stop fighting for the food. You'll never get it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to shoo you down for a second. Shoo, I gotta get the door open. I'm not gonna put the blanket on. If this had been a cat outside, <laughs> look at this. How many cats do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten little cats swarming this here. This is what we wanted to happen yesterday. Um, so if this had, if this were like um, cat, a cat that had just been recently trapped and arrived, it probably they would probably be scared of this because they would remember that experience but these cats are officially like socialized and they know that this is a good place to be 
So I'm not going to use the blanket. I am going to get the kitty cats down. This will be interesting to see who gets in there first. Hi. <laughs> I'm going to have you like hold them down. So. Okay, I'm holding the most curious of them all. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Let's see who gets in there first. This will be like Battle Royale of the Rescue Cats. Oh, Sylvie, the one you were holding, you called it. Woo! And uh, that's how you catch a cat. Not even a lunch. <laughs> Not even, well, yeah. He wants that food. Now, a stray or feral cat probably is going to wig out at that point. Whoa! <laughs> She's like, why are you doing that? Hey, Steph, can you reach in here and get Sylvie? Yep. Yeah. Just take the food out. I know, I am. We'll see if we can catch a different cat. I'm going to have you hold Sylvie this time so somebody else gets to try. Come on, boy. <clears throat> Look at all the cats. Michelle, see if you can angle the camera to be on the floor so they can see all the squirming cats. Okay. I'm going to try to get... There, there we, we go. go. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. This is so, cool. can you see any of them? Yeah, that just turn thing. the camera to angle it. Like, with the... So it sits. No, no, the middle. Okay, hold Sylvie. Sylvie got Ooh. his chance Ooh. at the food. Sorry, guys. Now it's somebody else's turn. Okay, who's coming up? Here, while we try the cat, I'll help you. Thank you. I can't hold him. Take him. <laughs> yes, I am. Sylvie is too curious, huh? Sylvie, baby. You're okay. Old Corgi's curious. Sunshine is trying to go without throwing in. And there he goes. He figured it out. Sunshine! Throw in! Although he's like, what the? Yeah, he's kind of a newbie, so let's get him out. Yeah, he's not happy, see? He's automatically like, I'm not, I'm not okay with that. Okay? No, oh, you need it. No, I'm just going to take it how it's supposed Let's see who gets it next. Which cat do we trap next? So far, we've got Sylvie. And that, that Sunshine. Sunshine. Cordae. Cordae! I'm Cordae. 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 No, but I'm not surprised it's her because but she's look at her. Like, she is smart. She's like being ginger. Yeah, is she gonna get it without? That's how you know she's a resident cat and she's seen this before. Yep. She she's on the other side of the plate like this, craning her head. Sorry. I'm gonna get the camera. I'm gonna show you guys. She is too smart. She is too smart. Look at this. She is eating the food. Hi. Smart baby. Yep. See down here? That's where the plate is. It goes up on this chain here. And she, her paws are right over here on the other side of that plate. She she's too smart. No, I think she's just seen this demonstration enough. That she knows. She's figured it out. She ran around it a good four or five times. That's true. As we were setting up, she was watching it hard. Smart cat. Okay, can we get her out and see which cat we can trap next? Shown our 
our objective here. Um, before we let you go for today, because we're almost out of time, I want to try to keep these live streams to 30 minutes, because I know that for little ones, that's probably the max of their attention span. A um, few things that we want to talk about. Maybe I'll get down like this. Um, reminder that if you're interested in this, if this was cool to you, or if you live in an area where you know that you could, look at Sylvia climbing up the tree. <laughs> Yes, that yes, our little ear tipped kitty cat. Um, if you live in an area where you think you could provide these services or you could be of assistance, um, go to BCAC's website, BooneCountyAnimalCare.com, and they have a tab that says Get Involved. And under that tab, it um, has a spot where if you have stray and feral cats that need to be trapped, you can fill out a survey and they'll put you on the waiting list. They have a waiting list that they go through the different places that need trapping done, and they'll get to you when they can. Um, you can also sign up to be a volunteer. Michelle here is the volunteer coordinator, so if you want to be a part of these efforts, she will hook you up with how to, how to be someone who does trap and your release. Or if you want to foster, oh my gosh, they are so in need of fosters. Um, this time of year, it's about to be the kitten boom. Mm -hmm. And so we are trying to get cats adopted so that the foster homes have room for kittens. So many kittens. And once this corona stuff is done, we can resume our kitten events. We, we, we're hoping to do kitten yoga on April 1st, um, or 2nd, maybe it was 2nd. And yeah, it's just not, it can't happen, right? But um, we do like to do kitten events where we fill the place with kittens and you get to get your love on, maybe adopt one. So anyway, lots of ways to get involved with Boone County Animal Care if this is interesting to you. Who's that on top? That's Val Raven. That's Val Raven. Awesome! Yeah. Um, also, while I'm talking to you guys, um, want to remind you that oh, I think a cat scratched me right here. Yeah, a cat scratched me. That was a being careful. If you have liked watching these live streams, <laughs> give me one second, okay, Selma. If you have liked watching these live streams, you might consider um, heading over to our website, and making a donation. That donation tab is under shop where you can buy like merchandise for us. Um, as I've told you guys, um, and I, I'll say this probably at the end of every live stream, is that we're currently closed. We are not essential, um, nor should we be, right? We're trying to keep everybody safe. And so we can't have customers during this time, but we still have to take care of the cats. So my husband and myself, my sister-in-law and my daughter, we come in here and we take care of them. We clean the facility up so it stays fresh and doesn't get gross. You know, you can't have 20 plus cats kitty paws on everything and never clean it. So we gotta clean the place top to bottom every day. And we also have to change litter boxes and feed them and give them medication. So we're still coming in and taking care of them, which is why we can do these live stream videos. And we are still doing adoptions. Um, huge increase of people who are looking to adopt a pet during this time at, when you're quarantined. It's a perfect time to adjust and acclimate the cat to your home, to get that cat one-on-one -on -one extended TLC and also provide you some some cat therapy, right? We're all a little bit anxious in this time, and the cat is the perfect animal with this deep purr to, to make you feel comfortable in this time. So do consider adopting and, again, donating to our website so that we can keep this place up. We've got to be able to pay our rent and our utilities in this time still. And if you do donate, you might consider, is there a cat you want to donate um, in honor of? We're doing a competition through Friday, tomorrow, to see which cat earns the most Who's this again? Cubby. Cubby. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, that's Cubby. Cubby's winning so far, by the way. Aww. <laughs> Please don't hold me like that. That's why we don't let people hold the cats at the cafe, because you don't know how they're going to react, and we don't want you getting scratched. Some cats love it, right? But some don't. You, you guys don't know that. So, yeah, Cubby's winning right now. And Pedro's in second place. Third place is um, Cardinal. Really? Yeah, it's the coloration. What kind of cat is that? She's a tortoise A tortoise. A tortoise shell cat. Beautiful coloration. And then there's a tie for fourth place. So if you put the cat you want to sponsor in the comments, we'll see which cat gets crowned king or queen of the quarantine competition. And then we're going to see about getting some sort of cat costume. <laughs> some sort of royal cat costume. We're going to okay. make some cat not happy by dressing them up which is always fun. <laughs> okay, very good. Um, we hope to see you guys again tomorrow for our next 4 o'clock live stream. Adios.